Hello, I'm Michael Ehrlich, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about a topic that is hot in the cybersecurity industry. It's off the top of everyone's mind, and that is ransomware. Uh, I thought I would spend a few minutes to give you my personal perspective and, and to describe what IronNet can do to mitigate the risk that ransomware poses to an organization. So first of all, let's dispel some myths, right? Ransomware dust just doesn't show up one day out of nowhere. It's not like your computer lives in isolation and then one day, all of a sudden it's ransomed. That may look like what happens to you, but in actuality, there are a series of steps that happen that allow your adversary access to that computer, download the malware and launch their ransomware. So this is not really how your computer exists in the real world. This is a slightly better depiction, right? Your computer, your enterprise, sits behind a number of cybersecurity controls here represented by that firewall or brick wall. And they are connected to the world via the cloud, the internet as we know it. And somewhere in the cloud lives your adversary. That's the little green guy up there. And he's got this big red encrypt button that he wants to launch and encrypt your contents on your computer and charge you money for you to have the ability to decrypt that. Before he can do any of that, he first has to get initial access, right? Depending on your security controls, that may be easy or it may be difficult for your adversary. Some techniques he could use, it might be a successful phishing attempt, right? A drive-by web download. He may be able to exploit a vulnerability in a public-facing asset that you own. Or he could even come in through your third-party supply chain, through your trusted connections. But the first thing he has to do as an adversary is somehow gain access to one of the assets in your enterprise. Once he does that, he needs a little report that's sent from that computer back to him so he knows where he's landed. Right? If it's a phishing attempt, he may, know, he may not know what kind of device he's landed on. Is it a Mac? Is it a Windows machine? Is it a Linux box? What OS is it running? Right? All those things he may have to report out from that asset via a command and control channel before he can download the malware appropriate for that sort of asset. Again, appropriate for the operating system, the device itself. Once he has that malware there, in the old days, you know, two years ago, the ransomware, the ransomware perpetrators, they would launch the ransomware right then and there, and they would charge you money. But that's not what happens today, right? The ransomware perpetrators, your adversary has become smarter. Once they've got the appropriate malware on your box, on your asset, they often steal all your important files. They exfiltrate data. That may be your intellectual property. It may be a customer list. It may be a work product that you're working on, right? But fundamentally, what they are trying to do now is they are trying to get themselves a backup way of earning money if for some reason you choose not to pay the ransom, right? So if you log on one day and you see that screen that your files are encrypted and you need to pay this guy money to get your files back, to unlock your computer, and you choose not to do that, nowadays that, uh, that adversary can sell the data he's stolen from you. Again, it might be customer lists, it might be your IP, because he wants a return on the investment he made uh, going through all these steps to access, download, and exfiltrate the data from your computer. So this is a really simplistic version. If we take a step back, this would only yield a little bit of money, right? Ransoming one computer in a large enterprise is really not cost effective, right? These guys don't make that much money from doing it. So rather, before they ransom one computer, what they really do is once they get a really good foothold in your environment, they spread laterally. They move laterally and try to infest, infect, whatever the word you want to use is, right? All of the assets in your enterprise that they can for a bigger impact, right? More reason for you to pay them money. On each new asset that they are able to access, they also need to know what type of asset is that so that they can download the correct malware for that particular operating system. Or perhaps if they don't have an encryption capability on one operating system, they will just, they will just not worry about that asset. Um, then what they do is once they've got the appropriate malware, just like on the first box, they will exfiltrate all the data they can that they deem important, that they deem uh, important enough for you to pay for even if you even if you choose not to, uh, not to decrypt. So it's at this point, right, once they've moved laterally through your environment, once they've downloaded malware to every one of your assets, and once they've taken, exfiltrated all the data that they can from those assets, it's at that point that they're actually gonna push that button, launch the ransomware, and lock up your computers and demand payment. If you look at these steps at access, command, control, data exfiltration, and lateral movement, all of those happen before the ransom demand is made. And in Iron Defense, we can detect those breach steps before the ransom demand is made. We have analytics that look for initial access. They are listed up here, right? Whether it's credential phishing, suspicious file downloads, suspicious logins, password sprays, all the ways an adversary can gain access, we look for and we detect. 
Once they have access, we can detect the command and control, whether it's command and control beaconing out, odd domains that they are coming from, using domain generation algorithms for command and control meetup, or even using encrypted communications. We have analytics that identify malicious uses of all of those things. And then they'll move on to data exfiltration, right? We look for PII data loss. We look for extreme data rates, unusual days, moving large amounts of data off a number of servers on the same day, right? These are all clues that you can find in your environment with Iron Defense. And then lastly, we also have a suite of analytics that look for lateral movement. That adversary is not going to be content just sitting on one asset, on one computer, on one laptop and ransoming that, right? Your adversary wants to move throughout, throughout your enterprise and ransom as many as he possibly can. And so with these analytics, we are able to identify all the steps post-breach and even pre-breach a bit, pre and post-breach leading up to the final push of the encrypt button. And all of these analytics offer an opportunity to break the chain that your adversary is trying to establish. I would point out that this entire chain uh, that you see here, the access, the command and control data, exfiltration, lateral movement, is the same as every other large scale attack, whether it's ransomware or not. Ransomware is simply a different outcome. Ransomware is a very quick way to make money. Um, and that's just one last step. Many adversaries never hit the ransomware button. They are content, uh, the APTs, if you will, they are content to steal your IP, to siphon off money in other ways over long periods of time. So Iron Defense, Iron Net is built to detect just this sort of thing. Um, and let's not let it get to the final ransom note as your first capability to detect. Thanks.